severe थंडर क्लैप लाइक हेड एक कंप्लेन नहीं कर तो दिस इज कॉल्ड हाइपरटेंशन अर्जेंसी जहां पर कोई एंड ऑर्गन डैमेज नहीं है इन पेशेंट्स को यूजुअली हम कुछ देर ऑब्जर्वेशन में रखते हैं और उनको जो अंडरलाइंग जो फैक्टर था हो सकता है कोई स्ट्रेस का फैक्टर हो कोई विथड्रॉल ऑफ ड्रग्स हो या कोई इसने कोई कोई ड्रग्स ली हुई हो या अल्कोहल इंजेक्शन हो या कुछ जो है जिसको हम कहते हैं कि पार्टी ड्रग्स लाइक एम्फीटामिन्स कोकेन एक्सटेसी ऐसी कोई ड्रग्स लिया हुआ उसने तो वो पेशेंट कहते हैं कि वो अवॉइड करें रिलैक्स करें काम करें और ब्लड प्रेशर का नॉर्मलाइज हो जाता है देन वी आस देम टू कंटिन्यू देयर एंड वी हैव पोटेंशियल ड्रग्स एंड फॉलो इन इन अ वे बट ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ समवन इज हैविंग रेज ब्लड प्रेशर अलोंग विद सिवियर चेस्ट पेन व्हिच इज रेडिएटिंग टू लेफ्ट आर्म और लेफ्ट शोल्डर जॉस अलोंग विद स्वेटिंग एंड पैराफेरेसिस देन दिस पेशेंट मे हैव अ क्यूट एमआई और द पेशेंट इज कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ हेमिप्लेजिया और पेशेंट इज हैविंग कंप्लेन ऑफ ब्लाइंडनेस यूनिलेटर ब्लाइंडनेस राइट सो दिस इज कॉल्ड हाइपरटेंसिव इमरजेंसी वेयर अलोंग विद elevated blood pressure patient has a signs of progressive to target organs or even sometimes patient present with frank heart failure with pulmonary edema so so there is a uh, difference between hypertension urgency and emergency both having same blood pressure readings but if someone is having no end organ damage this is called hypertension urgency whereas if someone is having end organ damage or evidence of end organ damage then this is called hypertension emergency right So epidemiology one percent incidence of hypertension emergency in patient with hypertension and usually survival rate of ninety percent and above. Etiologies what are etiologies? First, uh, most common etiology essential hypertension and most of the time patient they are usually non-compliant of their drugs and they they take their blood pressure very non-serious and this leads to sudden raise of blood pressure and an organ dysfunctions. Other other secondary hypertension. Secondary hypertension will include endocrine disorders. Common endocrine disorders are hypo or hyperthyroidism, Cushing syndrome, Cohn syndrome, where there is aldosterone excess is there, and some are the congenital disorders like congenital adrenal hyperplasia, little disorders. These are the few endocrinopathies. Uh, uh, I am mentioning again. These are hypo or hyperthyroidism, Cushing syndrome. Cone syndrome when there is aldosterone excess is there. The other causes are congenital like uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia and Liddell syndrome. These are the condition of endocrine disorders where elevated blood pressure is usually there. Renal vascular diseases like renal artery stenosis, antihypertensive withdrawal syndrome like someone is taking antihypertensive drug and suddenly withdraw. due to the falls believe that his blood pressure is now normalized and this is very common condition nowadays drug induced hypertension few drugs they causes raise in the blood pressure which includes nsaids steroids cocaine amphetamine ecstasy these are the few drugs which causes uh, hypertension eclampsia and preeclampsia of pregnancy head injuries and few burns So, what are the associated conditions or differentials in patient of hypertension urgencies or emergencies? As I already mentioned, few patient comes to us with the features of cerebral infarction, hypertension encephalopathy when there is severe headache, irritability, odd behaviors, frank pulmonary edema, myocardial infarction, left ventricular hypertrophy with uh, heart failures, acute renal failure. aortic dissection again this is a life threatening complications and medical emergencies the most common clinical presentation usually is cerebral infarction pulmonary edema uh, hypertension encephalopathy and congestive heart failure others are aortic dissection preeclampsia eclampsia and acute myocardial infarction so what are the presentation uh, which usually comes in a patient of hypertension urgencies or emergencies first duration of hypertension is very important if you are taking history in er or else then first duration and patient baseline blood pressure what are the normal blood pressure or daily routine blood pressure of patient whether blood pressure is controlled or uncontrolled and whether patient is compliant of their drugs or non compliant because mostly uh, hypertension urgencies and emergencies they usually uh, develop in patients who are non compliant of their drugs and what are the condition which can increases the chances of hypertension emergencies 
high blood pressure readings, comorbidities like patients are diabetic, they are having 10% increased chances of hypertensive emergencies or other ischemic heart disease, prior any uh, like metabolic syndromes or history of uh, drugs like steroids injections, NSAIDs, evidence of any uh, end organ damage, details of current antihypertensive therapy, recreational drug uses. So these are the elements of history of a patient is coming to you in a uh, uh, impression of hypertensive emergencies or urgencies. Examination finding first, oxygen saturation because if someone is having pulmonary edema or heart failure or even MI, then his saturation usually they are in the dropping pattern. Cardiovascular system like patient's blood pressure, both arms, because in aortic dissections, usually blood pressures are uh, asymmetrical in arms. Heart rate, whether patient is tachycardic, JVP, if patient is having heart failure, then obviously JVP will be raised. Any murmur, because ischemic uh, or uh, innovation of ischemic heart disease, usually they have functional mitral regurgitation. Because of the papillary muscle dysfunctions, they are having mitral regurgitation murmurs. Basal lung crepitations, again, in those patients who are uh, ischemic heart disease patients, frank pulmonary edema or heart failure, they usually have mild pulmonary edema and due to this you may hear uh, by basal crepitations. CNS examinations are very important because sometimes patients have hypertension encephalopathy or patients having stroke, they usually have an altered mental status or focal neurological deficits. Abdomen for uh, abdominal masses in patients of aortic aneurysms, auscultate for renal pre in patient of renal artery stenosis, fundoscopic examinations for cotton wool spots, exudates, and uh, retinal hemorrhages. Then we jump to investigations, how investigate a patient of uh, hypertensive emergencies. First you go for urea, creatinine, and electrolytes for uh, renal impairment because most of the time patient comes to us with the acute renal failures. And those clinically patients are not so uh, see, uh, not so deteriorated, but labs are quite disturbed. So we need to know underlying uh, renal impairment, urine analysis, where you can see the specific gravities, renal cast, uh, epithelial cells, which can lead to a diagnosis of renal impairment. ECGs for any underlying ischemic changes, chamber enlargement, like in heart failures, or even ST elevations. Chest X-rays again for pulmonary edema, cardiac sizes, or uh, if a patient is having aortic dissections, then widening of the media cinema usually a clue uh, for uh, aortic dissections. CT brain again to, to know the underlying any ischemia or uh, hemorrhages. CT chest or MRI for aortic dissections. So these are the investigations usually required other than baseline investigation like CBC obviously required, but other investigations, urea electrolytes, urine analysis, ECG, chest X-ray, CT brain and CT MRI to reach the diagnosis of hypertensive emergencies. Which organ is compromised? Now, these are the, uh, this chart is showing uh, organ dysfunctions and finding in uh, the laboratory workup or examination. Like in case, as I already told, aortic uh, dissections with abnormal finding on CT angiograms, transesophageal echo, but initial investigation would be chest X-ray. Because if chest X-ray is abnormal, then we move to CT angiogram or transient subject. Acute pulmonary edema, again, interstitial edema on chest angiographs, MI in the changes in the ECGs or elevated cardiac biomarkers like troponins, uh, ACS clinical diagnosis, again, changes in the ECGs and biomarkers. Renal failure elevated, uh, urea creatinins, and help or preeclampsia where hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelet count. This is mnemonic for health syndromes. Hypertensive retinopathy, where in the fundoscopy changes are retina hemorrhages and cotton wool spots, which I already told each and everything. But this is a chart for the quick review of these things. Hypertensive encephalopathy, usually, uh, usually CT scan and MRI are uh, inconclusive, but clinical history and uh, clinical examination usually gives a clue where the altered mental status al uh, along with elevated blood pressures and maybe papillary edema uh, in fundoscopic examination. Subarachnoid hemorrhage, intracranial hemorrhage, ischemic strokes, uh, usually they give the diagnosis via CT scan and LPs. Uh, sympathetic crisis, uh, as I already told, few drugs, they causes the raise in the blood pressure, which include cocaine, amphetamine, uh, and ecstasy, 
or few chromocytoma where elevated catecholamines are present in the blood which leads to elevated blood pressure, severe headache, pounding heart and fear of die. So these are the conditions which leads to uh, hypertensive emergencies. Now quickly management protocols, what are the management protocols for these patients if coming to you in, uh, in an emergency? So first, uh, as in all conditions, ABC is very important, airway, breathing and circulation is maintained. Then initial goal of therapy is to reduce the mean arterial pressure by no more than 25%. Means uh, you don't need to uh, rapidly decline the blood pressure. Just 25% reduction in the mean arterial pressure, then if patient is stable, then gradually reduce to blood pressure 160 by 100 within the next two to six hours. Because if you suddenly drop the blood pressure of that uh, patient, which is already hypertensive, then perfusion pressure is reduced and which lead to alteration in the CNS circulation as well as renal impairment and further deteriorating the condition. So this is the first rule of thumb. First rule of thumb is reduce the blood pressure gradually. Usually, initially, just less than 25% reduction of mean arterial pressure. And if patient condition stabilizes, then within next two to six hours, reach the blood pressure to 160 by 100. So choices of antihypertensive medication usually depends on the underlying and organ dysfunctions and usually availability of drug in your local setup and ease of administration as well and sometimes uh, physician's preference as well. So these are the few drugs we usually gives in a uh, patient of hypertensive emergency like sodium nitroprusside, nitroprusine, levetilol, phenyldopam is not available in our Pakistan, nicotine is available and hydrolyzing is available. Clomidipine is also not available. So usually we give drugs sodium nitroprusside, nitroglycine, levetilol, the nitroglycine comes with the name of isocate, hydrolyzine comes with the hydrolyzines. So, uh, if, uh, as I already mentioned, depends on underlying target organ dysfunction. So, suppose if a patient is coming to you with high blood pressure and cerebral infarction, then we don't usually reduce the blood pressure too rapidly. As I already mentioned, goal is permissive hypertension for 24 to 48 hours. Until unless if patient is having blood pressure more than 220, and 120 then we usually reduce the blood pressure because if someone is having blood pressure 180 by 100 to 110 and you keep on dropping the blood pressure to 140 or 130 then his cerebral perfusion will be reduced and patient will have more precipitating events like the rapidly developing of the ischemic events and thrombolytic is advised if someone is having blood pressure less than 180 by 100 so don't drop the blood pressure survey infarction patient until unless blood pressure is more than 220 and more than 120, right? Levitidol we can give in the starting bolus doses, nicotinoid infusions. Uh, these are the both drugs for cerebral and cardiac specific vasodilators. And we usually use it ischemic stroke, usually levitidol and nicotinoid. Hypertension encephalopathy, again decrease the mean arterial pressure by 20 to 25 percent diastolic blood pressure to 110 to 110 in one to two hours here we have freedom of choices in uh, uh, antihypertensive drugs like nicotinoid levetilol phenyldopam sodium nitroprusside uh, usually we use very cautiously because it can raise the intracranial pressure and uh, uh, leads to uh, papillary acute coronary syndrome uh, acute coronary syndrome includes uh, non ST elevation MI, ST elevation MI, as well as unstable angina. So, this is a broad term which includes three uh, categories unstable angina, non ST elevation MI, which is called anistamy, and ST elevation MI, this is called STAMI. So, goal is again gradually reduce the patient's blood pressure and increase cardiac functioning. We usually give uh, sublingually nitroglycine, IV nitroglycine, and levito IV nitroglycine comes with the name of isocate. IV levetilol usually this is having advantages but it can uh, uh, prone to arrhythmias so give very cautiously. Acute decompensate heart failure again again reduction of blood pressure by 20 percent and uh, to reduce the symptoms of flash pulmonary edema we usually give nitroglycine and nitroprusside and we usually avoid levetilol because already mentioned this is arrhythmogenic. So, if a patient is having acute decompensative heart failure, 
if we give labetalol then more chances the patient may develop arrhythmias and further precipitate the heart failure so avoid labetalol and nitrocalcipenes in patients of decompensated heart failure uh, usually give nitroglycerate and nitroglycine and once patient is stabilizes then go for ac inhibitors or arvs is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers these are very good for decompensate heart failures because it prevents the cardiac remodeling right then aortic dissections we are discussing each and every uh, disease stably how to reduce and how to uh, stabilize the patients of hypertensive emergencies so aortic dissection patient the uh, goal is rapidly decrease blood pressure because only single condition till now where we are decreasing the blood pressure very rapidly because aortic dissection is a life threatening condition and if we don't reduce the blood pressure too rapidly then uh, aortic dissection uh, will lead to sudden death uh, maybe because of patient of having ischemia hemorrhages renal impairment or even spinal cord infarctions so goal is rapidly decrease blood pressure to systolic blood pressure 110 to 120 usually target is systolic blood pressure less than 140 and labetalol always precedes vasodilator because labetalol is a very rapid acting and uh, it dramatically reduces the blood pressure to a normal level then nitroprusside and nicotinoids acute kidney injury again uh, blood pressure reduction is gradual no more than 20% because if we reduce the blood pressure very dramatically rapidly then this compromises the renal function patient may precipitate a renal failure again labetalol is a choice of drug then nicotinoid and phenylalanine sodium nitroprusside should be avoided due to possible toxicity and ac inhibitors or arv should be given very cautiously because a patient is having renal impairment like uh, urea criteria drainage and potassium levels are higher then uh, you need to stop the ac inhibitors or arvs other options are calcium channel blockers you can give safely to a patient of acute kidney injuries as well as hydrolysines and alpha blockers they are safely alternate options in a patient of acute kidney injuries so hypertensive emergencies in pregnancies usually usually uh, pre eclampsia or eclampsia patients uh, like uh, diabetic patient usually magnesium sulfate is a definitive treatment and delivery is the um, option we give to the patient because if delivery is delayed then it can uh, it can be lethal for both baby as well as pregnant lady goal is again blood pressure 160 or less labetalol iv is a drug of choice other is uh, usually nicotinoid ac inhibitors are contraindicated and hydrolysine is also contraindicated because uh, it uh, increases the blood supply to uterus and usually very unpredictable response so hydrolysine should be avoided usually we give labetalol and nicotinoids and magnesium sulfates hypertensive emergency due to catecholamine excess usually fentolamine is an alpha blocker usually starting drug then beta blocker if necessary but if someone is having few chromocytoma and blood pressure is not controlled despite the optimal medications uh, then surgery is uh, is a first line treatment of patient of a uh, few chromocytoma that is due to uh, catecholamine excess because uh, if this patient is left untreated then this may lead to acute heart failure as well as mi so after uh, treating with drugs that is fentolamine and beta blockers usually we plan for surgeries so this is an approach how to approach a patient of hypertensive emergencies first you need to Uh, you need to decide what are the associated or underlying conditions like pregnancy, aortic dissections, sympathetic crushing, pulmonary edema, MIs, cerebrovascular accident, or scleroderma renal crisis, few chromocytoma, and hypertension due to uncontrolled pain and anxiety. If yes, then then uh, this is secondary hypertension and evaluate and treat using a specific strategy which i already mentioned uh, accordingly which condition is patient is having then treat according to underlying conditions but if patient has not these things then then meet the criteria for hypertension emergencies and look for target organ damage if acute kidney injury type 2 mi hypertension encephalopathy and pulmonary edema and severe hypertension 
then mean arterial pressure at least over 135 mm then usually reduce the blood pressure and mean arterial pressure to 25 percent because this is primary hypertensive emergency and immediate blood control which required nicargepine infusions and labetalol and if not in hypertensive emergencies then no need to immediate blood pressure management and just assure the patient then symptoms will resolve just keep uh, keep him relaxed and uh, continue their usual medications and ask the patient to follow if any unavoidable event or after one week so what is the take home message first you need to identify what is hypertensive urgency and hypertensive emergency anybody can tell me in, in text what is the difference between hypertensive urgency and emergency can anybody tell what is the difference between hypertensive urgency and emergency anyone them all right so uh, differentiating between hypertensive urgencies and emergency is very important so someone has a fuck emergency with failure of some body system so emergency is having end organ damage better term is to use end organ damage that could be renal insufficiency cardiac insufficiency cerebral perfusion hypoperfusions or frank pulmonary edema so if someone is having and organ damage along with hypertension then it's a hyper emergency and if someone is having just raised blood pressure with no evidence of end organ dysfunction this is called hypertensive urgencies so no standard blood pressure necessary established so look for target organ damage usually we consider 180 or above but this is not a standard rule someone may present with a blood pressure 160 or 170 with end organ damage so you need to be very careful in these patients if someone is having 160 blood pressure and 100 or 110 uh, diastolic and he or she may have end organ dysfunction so uh, take these patients very seriously uh, although management is rapid but also careful in uh, monitoring is uh, required because sudden drop of blood pressure may lead to hypoperfusion and further deterioration of the condition so this is very important always drop the blood pressure gradually and 25 percent mean arterial pressure reductions then after two to six hours go for a systemic blood pressure less than 160 and dash 100 or less fine various medications available for the treatment after the emergencies usually commonly drugs are IV nicargepines labetalol nitroprusside and isocade or nitroglycine is there fine so a specific target organ involvement underlying uh, patient coma will dictate appropriate therapy which antihypertensive drug is choice in certain groups of patients fine if someone is having any question or query regarding this presentation so he, uh, he may ask so any query from your side or should i ask a question from you anyone all right so uh, anyone from you can tell me uh, if a patient is coming to you with a cerebral infarction and raise blood pressure of 180 by 120 so should we reduce the blood pressure of that patient or be left with such blood pressure anyone anybody i'm repeating my question again if a patient coming to you and presenting to you in an ER with a blood pressure of 180 systolic and diastolic 120, 180 systolic and diastolic 120, with uh, clinical examination finding of uh, left sided hemiparesis with slurring of uh, speech, like this patient is having ischemic stroke uh, affecting the right side. So, should we need to reduce the blood pressure to less than 180? and 120 or we left with the same blood pressure anyone all right so uh, we are uh, now concluding our session
and uh, inshallah next time we'll see today because it's already prayer time so i hope it was a first ever interaction with you people it was next time i advise all of you to please prepare uh, the topic which i've given you already mentioned uh, in the list so inshallah on the next time we'll have a discussion Someone has asked Umar Abdul Rahman, severe abdominal pain and blood pressure 170 by 90. So do we give him NSAID? Why NSAID? Means abdominal pain, uh, that could be because of uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm, or could be because of the gastritis, or abdominal pain could be something else. So why you are jumping to NSAID of that patient without uh, concluding the diagnosis because this patient may have uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm and NSAID will further deteriorate the condition. So first make the diagnosis. Why this patient is having abdominal pain? That is, depends on underlying uh, any side severity or associated conditions. So it depends on what underlying condition is. Anyways, thank you for today's session.